Hi everyone and welcome. This is my Oregon Grey Poly. Mahonia aquafolium. And one of the reasons it's called a Grey Poly is well because of these lovely purple berries that look like grapes. And I actually enjoy them myself. They're very, very tart. Um, birds love them. If you look right here, you can see the birds really <laughs> have been picking at them. But this plant has a very healthy supply of them. But we're not here to discuss the berries. We're going to discuss the wood and the roots. That's right, because the Oregon Grey Poly is a member of the family Berberidacea, and what gives it this orange and red color is a chemical that is used for the treatment of dermatitis, uh, such as uh, well, I'll, I'll break it down here in the description of the video uh, more specifically, but what the NIH, the National Institute of Health, and a multitude of studies has determined is that based on the trials performed to date, that it has shown the ability to prompt a statistically significant improvement in the symptoms of psoriasis and atopic dermatitis and was deemed a safe and effective therapeutic option in such studies. The side effects were minimal and well tolerated. Uh, it talks about how in a test of uh, several different patients that in some cases it worked better than the actual prescription medications, uh, which I have trouble pronouncing so I won't try, but again I'm going to put links and information on the screen. But these are kind of a weed here in uh, Northeast Texas. I love having them. It's kind of mixed in here with a gardenia that's not blooming yet. But I just wanted to introduce you to this beautiful plant and to put together a tincture and a salve. Uh, there are a lot of locals who swear by these. And like I said, there is medical research by the National Institute of Health, a real reputable organization of our government, who states the effectiveness of this. So this is not just my opinion or uh, anecdotal. There is actual fact that this works. I will be preparing this in a, it's uh, in a, uh, excuse me, about a 20% uh, tincture, the meaning that about 20% uh, of the actual tincture will be this and the rest of it will be the grain alcohol. So I hope that you stick with me for that process. I have already harvested uh, wood and root and I'm going to be grinding them up in, the, in my processor and showing you I already have a tincture made up, but I'll show you how I put together the tincture and the salve. So come along and, oh, there's a mockingbird. <laughs> so come along and we'll get going on that. They love this old dead oak. Right at the corner of the house, I've left this old dead oak uh, because the vines love it. There, it's covered in uh, a Carolina creeper and oh, I think there's a little poison ivy up there as well. But birds nest up there. Stevie has a nest up in there somewhere. Uh, it's kind of hard to see right now. When it was winter and there were no leaves on the vines, you could see it. But he's got a nest up there and he comes down to, to eat sometimes. Anyway, that's it, everyone. That's the Oregon Grey Poly. Mahonia aquafolium and we're going to go inside and put it together.
All right, so now we're going to add in our 6.25 ounces of grain alcohol. And that's all there is to it. This will then sit in this for about 30 days, at which point I filter it and get this stuff, which is the gold. This is the tincture. This tincture is then either is I sell it in both a tincture, but also put it in a salve. All right, so you can actually watch me go ahead and cask this. And do always make sure that you have <laughs> it closed because I have in the past accidentally left that open. Oop. And pour gently and slowly. <coughs> and there it is, casked up and ready to sit for a period of time. With this particular one, 30 days is more than enough in the cask to mild it and for it to be ready. Luckily, I already have another cask full and ready to go. So you'll find that I offer both the tincture and the salve in the Soapy Oaks Farm store. If either of these things interest you, give them a try. As with all my products, if there's something that you like and it works for you, that's tremendous. I appreciate your feedback. But if you don't like it or it doesn't work for you, let me know, please. I'm always happy to work with folks. If something doesn't work, well, gosh, I'll give you a refund. That's not a problem. Um, I don't have to do that very often, thank goodness. <laughs> It would get kind of pricey. Uh, but I would suggest that um, you read up on these. Like I said, I'm going to put the links in the description. Take a look at those. These things are so much fun for me to make. They're not difficult. Uh, and you can do them yourself. But I just have a lot of fun making them. Salves are just a matter of mixing your beeswax with your oil of choice. In this case, olive oil and the tincture. Um, you have to find the formulation that works best for you. A lot depends on whether or not you like a more salve-like, which is almost a very soft, buttery consistency. Um, well, not butter is the wrong word. Perhaps a soft jam, um, where some ointments are a little bit heavier, balms uh, are a little bit even thicker than that. A lot depends on how much beeswax or other waxes that you use to get the right hardness. Um, but nonetheless, give these things a try. This is such a beautiful plant. It's also a mean one. It's got some mean thorns here, very much like most a lot of hollies do. It's got little needles here on the end. Those hurt. <laughs> but such beautiful tart berries. These things are just wonderful. The birds love them, and I love them too. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. Have a terrific day. And hopefully I can get a soap video up later today or tomorrow as well. See you back soon and have a terrific day. Goodbye.